All right, check out this thrift store find. It's a masterwork. I believe it has something to do with CBS based on the logo right here. Anyhow, it's an AM radio. Doesn't even have FM, just AM only. I'm guessing this thing is probably from the early to maybe mid 70s. I'm not quite sure, but I use this in my garage. There is an AM radio station about 50 miles from me that plays 80s music and I kind of enjoy that when I'm out in my garage working. So I use this radio to pick up that one AM radio station. It even has the original AC adapter. 120 volts in, six watts, 5.4 volts out. This thing must be a powerhouse. Anyhow, let's go ahead and take a look inside the unit and see what lies beneath. Here's a look at the back of the unit. Made in Japan, looks like 708 possibly. I'm not sure if that's a date code for maybe August of 1970, I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and pop these little tabs open and we'll flip this up. And there is what lies beneath. Look at that. It's called a Masterwork 10. I believe there's gonna be 10 transistors in this unit. Yes, there are 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten transistors. And look at that. An actual open gang tuning capacitor. Three stages. This thing is really good on the AM band. I mean, it is hotter than a burnt boot. It picks up stations like no other for such a simple circuit. But let me go ahead and plug in the power adapter. I'll power this up and show you what's going on. Okay, here we go, power on. The volume knob is extremely scratchy. It's all over the place. Let's see if we can find a local station here. The tone knob is in the same boat. It's actually working pretty good right now. So what I'm wondering, will some deoxid F5 restore this thing to like new condition? That's basically what this video is all about. I just want to see if the F5 is going to actually restore this pot and hopefully keep it working for years to come so I can enjoy my 80s tunes in the garage. And unlike so many other radios in this period, I don't think this thing has ever had AA batteries inserted into it. Well, maybe there is a slight, just very slight corrosion right down there, but normally these things are just blue and green and crusty like no other. But anyhow, there is the battery pack. UM3 times four, six volts. There's the orientation of the batteries. But let's go ahead and shoot some F5 in this thing and see if it restores like new operation. So I've got my F5 right here. I have it set on manual focus, so it was out of focus there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot down in here. Run the pot around a few times. And we'll go ahead for good measure and shoot the tone control pot as well. Okay, let's see if it made a difference. Check out that coupling capacitor right there. Look at the date code on it, 6715. That would be the 15th week of 1967. Let's look at some of the other capacitors and see if they might have date codes on them also. There's one right there, 6705, the fifth week of 1967. Man, this thing is 54 years old right now. Man, just look at the construction of this thing. Look at that big old heat sink for the audio output transistors right there. I can't make out anything on that one. I can't make out anything on that one either. Anyhow, just look at the construction of this thing. Absolutely beautiful for just an AM radio. Check out that tuning capacitor by ALPS, A-L-P-S. Once again, big old open gang, three gang 
on an AM radio unheard of these days. While I'm in here, I thought I would just go ahead and give this thing a spritz, the local distance switch. Hopefully it doesn't leak out too much. I think just one spritz should be more than sufficient on this thing. Okay, now let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what happens. Look at the size of the AM antenna, the ferret rod antenna. All right, so I went ahead and I shut off my main video light, so it might look a little odd right now, but let's go ahead and power this up. There it is working even inside my house right now. It is picking up KFI AM640 out of Los Angeles. It is nighttime right now. And that's a 500 mile away station from me right now. So there is some AM propagation going on, which is why I like these radios so much. I used to uh, do a lot of DXing, listening to distant radio stations. Working perfect though. Look at that, it's working great. No static at all. Anyhow, that is it, the repair on the masterwork. I think I may have stated it was CBS. I believe the logo is Columbia House, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong, if I am, please correct me. Anyhow, that, that's what the video light's on. It's actually still picking it up, but it has a lot of interference because these video lights are LED and they have high frequency switching power supplies in them. But that's it, the Masterwork 10. I certainly hope you enjoyed testing the Deoxit Fader F5. Worked like a charm on this thing. Once again, thank you to whoever my commenter was that suggested I watch the video from X-Ray Tony B. Worked absolutely perfect, love it. I'm gonna keep using this on carbon-based pots, no problem. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this hopefully very short little video. I really do appreciate it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.